The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And boy, do we have a big day here up 1.6% on the S&P cash. I was looking for a bounce all week. I thought it would come uh, this morning after earnings. And a few things started to happen to kind of spun things out of control. Uh, at least uh, for me, thinking I was going to be up at 5.30 and cash in big. You need to be up at midnight because what happened at midnight, and that was the Taiwan Semiconductor earnings, uh, came out a little bit earlier than expected. That was about midnight Eastern time. Uh, the market started turning around there. We've got rumors that uh, China is going to start uh, maybe uh, uh, also uh, making a little bit more money available. Uh, the Fed has been pumping since uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, they must have doubled up over the last night. And what we have is kind of a perfect storm of massive, uh, of massive uh, cash inflows around the world. Uh, and at the same time, um, the bond vigilantes are feeling fairly good. They're not selling into this. They think that the government uh, uh, talk of massive spending is uh, going to be a fraction of what uh, a lot of the uh, extreme, extreme, extreme far left were talking about uh, in the neighborhood of that what would have really been about almost six trillion dollars. Um, don't know if that's actually going to be anything now because they can't agree on not spending the six trillion. Um, eh. Politics is the art of compromise, and we may actually be saved by no compromise, which might be the best thing. Generally, when government does nothing, generally the stock market does fairly well. They like gridlock. Let me put it. So uh, give me a call today, 877-927-6648. We've got just about everything uh, going our way. We're not quite out of the woods yet. And when we talk about that, uh, you want to look at the TLT. The level I've been looking at on the TLT has been 146.50. Uh, this is certainly good. We were way on our way to 138 and 139. Uh, without the FEM, Fed's massive push in the last few days. But I have a feeling now that everybody's uh, getting on board. We had uh, uh, at least some action on the Long Beach front uh, with uh, them opening up 24-7 now. Uh, just because there are a few people short, they can't just all go home at 6. Um, so we'll see. That would, so probably took a little bit of political capital to tell the Long Beach – uh, longshoremen that uh, you know what if you don't work we're gonna get somebody here that are that is but anyway they're going 24 7 out there gonna try to get 11,000 of those uh, containers uh, on their way every day more than they had been uh, of course that's quite the busy port that means they're gonna have to get on the trains planes and automobiles to get that stuff here by Christmas um, but we shall see I don't know I mean, that's the news. Reality is always a little bit different than that. But a lot of the problems uh, that a lot of people were you know, looking at were just problematic. There wasn't a lot going on. Uh, it was kind of like everybody was frozen. Uh, the one big thing that uh, isn't going the way of the economy is crude oil. It's nice to be long crude, but, of course, uh, that, is the, that is the most massive tax on uh, the lowest of, in, uh, of on the income scale in America, uh, up 99 cents, 81 dollars 43 cents. That's just an implied tax every single day, a brutal tax on the people that they uh, say that they want to help. Uh, but eh, I don't know about that. Doesn't seem like the actions match their words. Got to use our words. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, yeah, this is more than I ever expected. Everybody was at least expecting a push to 4,000 on the S&P cash. The maybe too many people got short yesterday. Maybe, maybe people got too, uh, too on the side of, uh, of uh, uh, thinking down and the market was going to break. Normally, that's when everything goes the other way. There wasn't a lot in the puts and calls. Um, there is kind of this idea that everybody's now using triple leveraged uh, ETFs, and that's what's going to uh, basically take these guys that are way too bearish at the lows out. Um, the only thing you can't do, in fact, it's been, what, three years now? Three years since you get uh, the uh, every uh, two-week uh, short numbers for ETFs. Those are no, are no longer published. And, of course, they said that's because, you know, people can actually be a lot more short on ETF than long, which is true. But it would be nice if they published the numbers. The only thing you do get is how many people actually shorted uh, an ETF. But, again, unless there's a, not an inverse on that, there's not a lot of reasons to actually short an ETF. But uh, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, people on both sides of that. But... You know, numbers on those uh, ETFs, uh, the bearish side of those, actually fairly large. That's easy to take a look at. Uh, but uh, you know what? Uh, I think everybody – it kind of reminded – I was thinking of the producers this morning uh, when everybody kind of uh, didn't really – you know, they were doing everything they could to make sure this play failed because they threw uh, sold 1,000% or 1,500% of the play. Uh, so there were 15 people out there that thought that they owned the whole thing. So let's just uh, let's chalk it full of Nazis and uh, do other things that's so offensive and over the top that it'll close on the first night. Well, I think that a lot of people this morning, maybe the Fed president, maybe others, all thought, you know what, no one's doing a thing. So let's all do something. And they kind of just, uh, maybe not in concert, but uh, all kind of did something at the same time and uh, got a surprise benefit of probably blowing the market up a little bit more than they probably wanted to. I imagine the Fed president is probably going, well, you know what? I probably put a little bit too much money in there that week, but uh, we'll see. I'll watch the options here before the close. Like I said, it was a really good uh, indication uh, that when we were 50 points higher, we'd be 50 points uh, uh, 50 points lower would be 50 points higher today at least. Um, maybe we just got too many people short. I'll look at the numbers tonight. But, uh, it is interesting. Uh, could we get a little of a pullback in tomorrow? Generally, what happens on these days is that uh, you're going to get within probably a half a percent of any move tomorrow. That's pretty standard. So if we're up 1.6%, could you get a half percent pullback in the S&P tomorrow? Yeah, that still doesn't take you under 4,400. Anyway, when we get back, we'll talk about uh, history. We'll talk about the volume we have today. Uh, what do you think it should be? Well, it should be, for what we have today, I'm figuring we should have about $7.5 billion. I will do the reveal when we return. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yeah, Steve Rhodes uh, in the den. We're talking about uh, how to get those uh, ships uh, to other ports if you can't get them to this one. Um, the largest ships that they built really are built for um, – container ships are built for one purpose, and that's to go from – was it Shaixing, China? I think that's the city. Uh, to Long Beach. Um, they've improved the ones in Washington State. But three out of four containers are, end up on a rail going somewhere closer before they actually have truck drivers grab them. If you're not in the first couple of states on the uh, left coast there, you're, uh, you're probably going to see your thing dropped on a train and it's going to get a lot closer unless it's some kind of emergency stuff. They're not going to actually take it from one side of the country to the next. Uh, but uh, even the Panama Canal got uh, deepened and widened uh, a couple of years ago, but still those biggest ships can't get through it. Uh, the idea was maybe we can get them to other ports like here in Florida or up the East Coast uh, that aren't so busy. And, uh, yeah, if it was easy, they probably would have been doing it already. Uh, but uh, now it's, it's just a problem. You don't move all that in one day. I think 38% of everything that we get in uh, from Asia comes into the Long Beach port. So it's not like you instantly flip a switch. Like I said, even even as this was starting, uh, a lot more ships were just going on up to Washington. But you need that. You need uh, you need two things. You need a deep water port, and you need rail access because those things are not going to. Uh, they need to get on those rails to get anywhere close. And then, of course, the truck drivers take them last two or three hundred miles generally, or maybe even farther, maybe a thousand. But they're going to be dropping them off along the line uh, on those trains. So uh, all that kind of logistic stuff, it just never works out well when it breaks. There's just no easy way of fixing it. Uh, mm, yeah, there's just it's tough. And uh, I've, I've, I actually had a friend that was a, uh, still is, I guess, uh, a uh, guy that has kind of a market for truck drivers. 
and he's always uh, trying to put truck drivers together with these things uh, and mix and match them. And that's his job uh, as a broker for a lot of the uh, bigger companies. So they'll call him first. Um, I'm sure he's going nuts trying to do anything to get stuff to literally could close down a company there. But there, it's, there's a lot of stuff already going there already. It's not like these guys have been closed and they just warm everything up. They're, they're pretty much there. But uh, according to them, 11,000 containers more a day till they get caught up. But uh, we'll see um, on that. But it's certainly doable. I think uh, when I found out yesterday that they weren't even open 24-7, I thought, uh, what in the world is going on? Who in the world approved that with all these things piling up? But you know how those things work. Uh, 877-927-6648. And we're going to talk a little history. And my brush with greatness. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Yes, it's always history repeating. On this day in 1977, Atari releases their first video computer system. It was called the VCS in early ads, later called the Atari 2600. It took two years for the VCS to really gain traction, mostly because it was massively expensive and there were no games. By 1979, it was the best-selling gift of the Christmas season. Once it established, the Atari VCS took the market by storm popularized home video gaming and helped cement the video game movement in mainstream culture. Of course, uh, Nolan Bushnell, a man I would later meet uh, almost, uh, what, uh, 25 years after this happened? 1995, 1996, I met him. Um, had gone through uh, problems of his own. Uh, in 1983, the Christmas of... Atari uh, blew themselves up by making a game called E.T. Uh, and the transfers and the graphics were just horrifically bad. The gameplay was bad. And, of course, remember, that this wasn't just you're downloading games. They had to make all these cartridges, and the cartridges were expensive, but that was kind of part of their copyright scheme and everything. Well, this game just blew up and really caused a crash uh, in the video game business in 1983-84 in that people were so ticked off at the spending uh, big bucks because even back then I think this game was 30 bucks. I mean, that'd be like 100 today, I think, for a video game. And it was horrible. Uh, anyway, uh, Nolan was out uh, and uh, Jack Tramiel ended up buying it, making Atari... Uh, computers and some other stuff uh, coming out around 1986. Uh, of course, he had left from Commodore business machines that had been making a lot of the Commodore 64s and knew that part of the business. Uh, uh, Edmund, is it Edmund Gould? I think it's something. Anyway, his name was Gould. He ran Commodore uh, into the ground uh, over the next uh, eh, 13 years as he sucked all the money out of it. And that was the first time I ever figured out uh, just how much money you can go uh, going broke, how much money you can make for yourself. Uh, but certainly uh, Irving Gould did that uh, at Commodore. Same thing in Atari. Tramiel and uh, Gould were birds of a feather, although uh, they were very different in the way the uh, their approaches of running their companies into the ground. Uh, but uh, interesting nonetheless, and of course a lot of very interesting technology at that time that took almost 15 years to match on the PC side, especially for graphic media and audio and a lot of that other stuff. Uh, I met uh, Nolan Bushnell, who would have gone to make three other big businesses uh, between 1983 and when I met him in 1996. Uh, he was also the founder of Chuck E. Cheese. He found uh, all those, uh, some company that made all those uh, goofy uh, uh, animatronic stuff and uh, ended up um, making the Chuck E. Cheese thing, uh, which was uh, ended up being a huge moneymaker for him. Uh, didn't I don't think he's gone public with another company since. Anyway, I met him, and right in the de de middle of the meeting, we were talking about doing stuff for a Commodore Amiga. Uh, I was representing a, a big company at the time. 
Uh, and uh, you know what? I got the call. Everybody had been laid off in the programming staff at, of Commodore uh, Business Machines. I don't know how you go any farther once you've killed off all the programmers. Uh, so we were in this meeting, and uh, everybody was talking about stuff. And I thought, you know what? I can still catch a plane today, uh, tonight, and get back. I was in Chicago. I can still get a, 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 a plane. Or did I go see my brother? Because my brother lived there. It was one of the two. Can't remember now. But uh, I can still get a plane. So um, I stood up and I said, all oh, the programmers just got canned. How far is this going to go? <laughs> Everybody looked at each other and made some phone calls. Uh, I was on the road in 30 minutes. We'll be back in less than three. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, did I, I, I got triggered during the break. My engineer spelled color the wrong way. We fought and died to kick the British out of the country and not to have a U in our uh, word color. It's C-O-L-O-R. There's no U in color. It's time to bring out the pitchforks and make sure no one does that again in the United States, lest they be uh, cored. What is it? Quartered? Drawn and quartered. You have to be drawn first and then quartered, apparently. 
There's no quartering and then drawing, apparently. 877-927-6648. As we left, uh, the excellent program already going on. Uh, I asked what I, I thought that the volume should be about seven and a half billion shares today at this time. Uh, if we were going to have a big volume day and this wasn't just more of a giant trading range. So what do you think we have? Seven and a half billion is what I was looking for. That's what we're looking for. And 6.15. So we are kind of light. Um, now, maybe we get a whole lot more before the end of the day. But my guess is we probably get a little bit of a retreat. As I said last week, I was looking for um, and into uh, next week before we would probably have any problems with the downside in the market. There certainly is some significant upside. We'll see what the uh, volume brings uh, in the uh, current day. Um, there were a few things I wanted to talk about. And, oh, first one was Taiwan Semi. Uh, and then we're going to talk about Apple because both of these companies uh, kind of got together and said, you know what? Uh, there's been a lot of news out, but that news has been wrong. Um Taiwan Semi, you know, nice trading range. Nothing to say that we're out of that trading range now. Had a 12 million share low on August 19th at 107.24. We got to 107.58 and started kind of playing around a little bit. Um, but uh, you only had 7.5 million shares on October 6th when you got into that. You didn't break it, which I would have liked. Uh, energy was about 15% lighter on the way down. So it wasn't, a, you know. I don't know who in the world would think that Taiwan Semiconductor uh, is going to have a bad hair day. More likely, the Chinese literally take over the country. So it's kind of a binary outcome on Taiwan. Semiconductor, if I was going to play it, I would only use options to limit my risk going forward, as I would any China stock. Um, anyway, as we look at Taiwan, as I said, Interesting, I was getting up early at 5.30 this morning for their earnings call at 6, and guess what? They left it, they let it out at midnight. Um, not exactly sure why, but uh, it kind of, especially in Taiwanese, using Google Translator, you don't always get the full picture, uh, so it's a little murky. Uh, but they got started, uh, China started uh, talking about uh, making more money available uh, in the markets, too, and you can really see the uh, ES really kind of bottomed around midnight on that stuff uh, happening. It's, what, eight hours ahead, or is it nine hours ahead? Can't remember right now. Um, you would think Australia is exactly so, 12 hours? Yeah, I'll have to look it up. Can't remember. Uh, anyway, Taiwan Semiconductor. They're saying there's no problem. They're making more chips. They're going to make 25% more uh, in the next year than they made this year, and this year was great. So nothing but uh, the pie in the sky other than those pesky uh, chai -coms flying their military jets over their country. Another thing happened is a bunch of folks came out and uh, said, uh, you know what? Uh, all these Apple suppliers that supposedly – uh, we're seeing uh, uh, units cut. Uh, Apple says no. I mean, we haven't cut anything. Some of the other suppliers also say that uh, why they let that story sit for a day or two, which I don't understand. Um, maybe they were just trying to catch some folks out here. But uh, we were talking to somebody else the other day, and I always say in these deep declines, uh, like you've had in Apple here, what you really want is when you find some kind of low that looks like a low, is you're going to get a bounce. Now, Wyckoff called that bounce an automatic rally. Then you kind of pull back, and if it's on lighter volume, then you're good to go. So you wanted something less than 100 million shares. Uh, you got uh, 78 million shares yesterday. Uh, if you wanted to buy a stock, 
in the Wyckoff method, you'd wait until it went back above some kind of moving average or something. I like to use uh, Joe DiNapoli's three by three. That's a three day average uh, pushed into the future for three days because it shows you kind of where that level is, which is around 142. As you went through 142, you had to think about getting it. Uh, options on this, as we said earlier in the week, were showing 145. Uh, I thought I'd be able to buy this thing still lower uh, before the market opened. And of course, uh, good luck buying options today or buying calls on it for one uh, 42.50, which is what I thought I'd be able to do. So I was right uh, on the uh, on what was going to happen. I was kind of maybe a few hours behind on the excel actual execution and uh, about 40 points uh, higher uh, today than I thought. Uh, but uh, at least I wasn't short, that's generally. So uh, question, what did I do? I, I bought the ES as soon as I could when I woke up. I, I could just see it was going up and there probably wasn't a lot of downside for the rest of the day. Uh, all you have to do is look at that ES from midnight. So I got out way too early because I was thinking, you know, 44.10 on the cash, 44.15 on the cash, that's pretty good. Um, but, uh, eh, there was more there. Anyway, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight up 73 points on the S and P cash up five thirty three on the Dow NASDAQ up two fifty one. Russell up 32. Uh, we've got uh, crude oil up a buck, uh, gold up $4, silver up 36 cents. Uh, but, uh, again, probably the most important thing that happened this week for traders is that TLT. Uh, we saw the the uh, bond vigilantes uh, take a big swipe at the, at the market and push it down as long as big talk of huge spending continued as that abates, um, the bond vigilantes kind of getting off this. Again, 146.50 is kind of where you're starting to say uh, happy times or happy days are here again. That's what it was. Happy days are here again. I've got to sing my 1930s songs, but that was kind of in the height of the Depression. I wonder how they got that song through. Uh, question, uh, first email through the day is about Sava, S-A-V-A, -A, uh, which I played a, a few times in her day. Uh, not something that I'm comfortable with holding overnight, but I know some that are. Um the one thing I was looking at and played it a few times on this ramp up to $70.28 is just the massive shorting of the stock. There's many of them like them. Um, you've got two days now where you're above the three by three. So, yeah, we'll handle more of this when we return. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And as we come back, uh, was out of the corner of my eye, catching uh, uh, CNBC, somebody talking about hydrogen. Don't spend much t uh, attention to it. But he's talking about uh, the hydrogen stocks, which why not much is going on or he can do much here. We take a quick look at it. Um, hydrogen ETF, H-J-E-N. Again, this is very early innings in this industry, but this uh, is one to keep an eye on. Uh, nice big volume day here. Must be something else going on why they have the guy on TV. But uh, as we've been talking the last handful of days, I continue to think that batteries are not going to be the future of electric vehicles, but uh, fuel cells with hydrogen uh, or some gas, probably a good idea. Especially with uh, Toyota getting that car that went 850 miles on one charge. So, and... You know, you can fill it up in five minutes. 877-927-6648. Uh, uh, we were talking about uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Let's take a look at a few of these other semi-stocks. Uh, you got a little bit of a bounce out here on Micron, uh, but uh, not much volume. Um, still a lot of talk about maybe something going on. Um, in the uh, turnover from DDR4 to DDR5 memory. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, so who knows? But uh, should have seen a lot bigger move in Micron. Did not get it. Uh, of course, uh, all week long, uh, we've been looking at AMD coming out with really good news uh, about a uh, very good, great uh very good low-end video card no word on when you're going to be able to get the thing uh but uh, certainly you know it's shipping and uh, they were able to keep it quiet until the day of uh but certainly this uh card doing well um but uh you know you had a fairly just kind of sideways uh market going on you had kind of two days where it went up to 105 four days sideways and now up to 112.22 again you would have liked to seen a lot more volume question is uh, where does it go 118 it looks like you're going to need some volume in this to get back up there uh, no answer yet as to whether or not we're just in a giant trading range in this higher thing maybe waiting to get past uh, and through christmas and then maybe all these uh, other issues with uh, supply lines and, and uh, masks and vaccines. Uh, all is in the rearview mirror. Uh, okay. Other questions out here about what we got going on? 
Uh, Hector says, isn't this a dead, uh, a uh, textbook lesson in dead cat bounces? Um, well, certainly the volume in the queues is problematic. You're seeing that you went right up to where resistance was. Uh, and that is this big ca down candle of the 28th of September. You came down with 97 million shares. You're into it with 30 million shares now. So let's say 45 million shares by the close, maybe 50 million shares, you're still at 50%. So that's why I'm saying maybe this is just a part of a bigger trading range out here. Uh, thinking Powell may be a little upset about throwing so much money into the bond market this week now that everything kind of turned around uh maybe he puts a little less in next week but yeah uh i would say that the lion's share of the money made off the bottom is certainly there um some people kind of fishing around for maybe some starter positions on shorts yeah but here here's the thing if we're going to probably move uh there are patterns and all this stuff and the pattern you know, that we saw developing into this week on options is one. Generally, you don't go do much on the day after and the actually the next two days after options expiration. Monday and Tuesday after options, monthly options expiration is generally rollover days when people are moving a lot of these options and futures positions around. Generally, you have one day down and one day up but uh, the combined Monday and Tuesday after Friday's monthly option expiration uh, is one of the uh, lowest correlations for actual movement by Wednesday. So if you if Monday's up, Tuesday's down, if Monday's down, Tuesday's up, it tends to be very tough to see um, a, a lot of action. You get two days. Wednesday is when the market's generally start moving again, short of a very spectacular headline event. So if we're going to move, maybe we go back and pull back a little bit tomorrow. I'd be f flat in cash for overall indexes into Wednesday unless we get some kind of big news event. I don't see a lot going on right now that makes me think we're going to see a big news event right now. We also have another thing. And another reason why I probably wouldn't go short, and that is even on sh uh, light volume bounces like this, I normally want to give them three days. People that were monstrously short on margin, uh, the market just knows. It knows, it knows, it knows. Those three days before people that were doing something stupid, like either getting way too long or way too short, um, it takes a long time for a stock uh, trader uh, and equity trader to really understand that just because you made a lot of money or you're thinking a lot of make a lot of money is not a reason to increase your risk on this trade. Generally, I reduce the amount of money uh, that I'll put into a trade when I'm not trading well, and I'll go up to my regular full uh, position, which may be as much as 15% of the portfolio in one individual stock, 20% uh, if it's an ETF. Uh, but uh, you, you just don't want to bet at all. It is a long-term game, even trading short or trading at a short time frame, and uh, adding risk because you've done well, or uh, trying to bet the farm on a single trade is never a good idea. I've never seen anybody long-term. Uh, they always end up stepping on a landmine and losing a leg. Um, no, I don't think I don't think you're going to get any kind of big rug pull. I think you got. Uh, you, I think if you're going to get it, it's going to be tomorrow. They're not going to let anybody out on the short side easily today, at least in my opinion. It rarely happens over uh, the last uh, 20, uh, 22, 22, 24 years of doing this. Occasionally, even I learn a few things. Um, question about uh, Best Buy. Um, now that we've got uh, the president on the on the job, is uh, it really going to be that much better for Christmas uh, from Wallace? Uh, uh, BBY, you kind of come up. You just have very 
light volume, five, six days. Right now, a uh, bounce and a down trend until you go retest 10342. Things are better than they were, but uh, I think that Best Buy is going to have a hard candy Christmas. If anybody knows where that reference comes from, we'll be back in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return, we we'll continue to watch uh, a very large bounce on light volume. But my guess is that, uh, or my opinion is that uh, it will be problematic to see this market roll really even into tomorrow, although you may see a little bit of pullback uh, tomorrow. But my guess is they're going to hold it up, not make it easy for anybody that was uh, massively short to get out uh, easily market generally when you're this wrong you know you should have and, it, and most people haven't i've done it in the past oh are we still here are we here i'm hearing all kinds of bounces here anything here are we there Anyway, we'll go on. I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. Spotty? Okay. 
Uh, why don't we do this? Uh, okay. You say you can't hear me. Okay. Good enough. I was hearing all kinds of, of Skype kind of things that made me think that we were not in the best of conditions. Anyway, uh, Best Buy, uh, you're up on light volume. We'll keep a, a very close eye today on that volume. But again, uh, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, this may be the last big move up. Things are probably not going to get as rosy as everybody thinks they are as quickly as they are. And two, man, this is October. You should have had a lot of this stuff. In fact, I noticed the Walmart was opening up uh, areas in its parking lot uh, for all the wintertime stuff back in uh, July. I think the last week in July. Anyway, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you tomorrow. Same bat channel. Same bat time. I think there's probably going to be some good individual stock action tomorrow. I'm hoping. See you then.